I've heard a lot of tips recently about what to do when you're public speaking, including clenching your butt and breathing. So I'm going to, if you see some weird things from up here, then you know why. All right. Um, hello, I'm Lisa Marie Carvin and I'm a full stack web dev. Um, I've been working in WordPress for a very, very long time. Um, we established last night that I think the first WordPress version I used didn't even have pages. So that's kind of how old that is. Um, I became interested and obsessed with WordPress um, and website security, especially in 2016, because there was a couple of things that happened around that time. Um, the first one was that my site was hacked, and I just kind of couldn't believe that somebody would do it. You know, my core was updated, all the plugins were done, uh, my theme was custom coded. I'd done everything right, as far as I could see, um, but it was still hacked. And it wasn't anything too major, it was like a few text files in the root directory mainly just saying like, ha ha, got you. Um, you. You get a lot of that. You've, I don't know if anybody here has found any weird text documents, but that's what they usually tend to do. Um, and when I think back on it, it was kind of, must have been a piece of cake for them, you know, and that's kind of embarrassing. So the second thing that happened was that I got a bit older and I decided that I really, really enjoy my privacy, like to an obscene amount, <laughs> which makes situations like this a little bit more kiosalin. Um, but data leaks from social media and lay, uh, the laid, yeah, the laid back way that te big tech is using our data really got me fired up and a desire to keep my stuff safe and stop them from digging through it in real life and in digital. The thought of someone going through my old files, draft blog articles, contact form data, dodgy goth stuff I did back in the day, uploaded images, zip files, old database dumps, backups, like it just freaks me out. It should make everyone freak out, really. So I decided to do something about it, and it would be something I'd come to regret, because when you get a little bit of knowledge, you end up with more sleepless nights. I decided to delve more into security and DevOps and find out what makes that side of things tick, which led to some interesting findings and into pen testing and OSCP to learn how these bad actors... Let's see if this works. I love Nick. I do, honestly. Um, but finding out how these bad actors work. Um, what the, how they get into systems, what they do when they get there, and why they would bother. Because why bother? Most websites assume security by obscurity. Why would anyone bother to hack my website? Hacking isn't personal usually. Spots running, looking for holes. Certain things on your website can attract them more, such as free contact form plugins. We all know which one. Um, E-commerce can get them pretty excited as well ready-made marketplace themes and applications, they're all like really good fodder for bots. Um, mainly the reason they try to find holes is just because they can, but in the past few years it's really ramped up and sites are being actively targeted. So, a lot of ha-ha got you, but also here is a case example. Uh, one night one of my customers, who's a local museum website, had a tidal wave of bot activity just out of nowhere. Uh, the bots were trying the usual, circumventing country limitations using a VPN from Poland, getting past Cloudflare's bot protection, testing for every vulnerable plugin known to mankind, testing good old XML RPC and API endpoints. And what surprised me was not that they would try to do these things, because they usually do. Um, usually bots are reasonably polite. They kind of take your robots TXCT, um, they ignore it slightly, you know, push past it and then keep trying. Um, but usually they'll leave quite quickly when they don't find what they're looking for. But this one in particular was going all out. I mean, it was, it was mental. Uh, that same day, the museum had posted an article offering Ukrainian refugees free entry to their sites. And I'm not even exaggerating that it was like within 12 hours that started. So how do we fix this problem and protect our data and importantly, our customer data better? We have to fix it systematically at every level. So, breathe, clench butt cheeks, right. <laughs> this is gonna get technical, so sorry, in advance. Uh, the first is DNS level. We need to clean up our DNS records, remove old WordPress versions, some random subdomain, we all have them, set up SPF and DKIM to help protect against email fraud. Um, if no email will be sent from that domain, there's DKIM records you should add to your domain to protect them. Uh, to prevent spoofing. Good DDoS protection is a must. 
Um, I'm a big fan of Cloudflare's WAF because not only do they offer it for free, there's also a hell of a lot of features from bot blocking, caching, right through to the best DDoS protection. And it's important to know I'm not partnered to anyone, so these are just opinions. And if Cloudflare starts to suck, I'll be looking for a better alternative, unless someone here already has one, in which case I shall be happy to listen. The next level is server level. Security patches are a must, but we also have to close all ports by default and only open up what we actually need. One problem with most hosting is that customers have access to everything from SSH, SFTP, sometimes FTP, which is really terrifying, um, to email ports. Of course, they need to keep them open for the comfort of the vast majority of users, but servers that are locked down by default and only giving users who actually know what they're doing access, you're saving yourself a lot of headaches. So you have to be paranoid by default, which doesn't make for a healthy population, but it's good for security. The next level is the WordPress level. We all know about keeping plugins and themes up to date, but we also should be careful about how many plugs, plugins and themes we're using. The more we have, the more surface area there is, and the more potential holes. As I mentioned before, there are certain plugins and themes that are bigger targets, so we should avoid those if we can. Core updates are, of course, a given. Um, remove all but one default theme and the theme in use, and hopefully it's a custom-coded theme. Um, I'm not saying there's not good ready-made themes out there, there is, um, but they need to be updated frequently, and they, they have to have a longer lifespan than six months, which is your usual from marketplaces about six months before they're hacked. Um, so hopefully they're custom coded with a minimum of dependencies. This is also very important um, that our stacks are as minimal as possible. Uh, the more dependencies, the more surface area, and also more likely to break in the future, which is, I think everybody knows about that. Um, when coding applications, we need to take care that our endpoints are secure. Bad coding. That's, this is an example of that I did, so you can blame me for this. Uh, many years ago, I coded an extended tool for a small e-commerce site for a local pizza place. It was a demo for the customer, and it was pretty obscure. It wasn't easy to get to, and it was a standalone app within WordPress, so it wasn't even in the sitemaps. Um, it took some time, but the bots did find it, and then eventually they were able to grab data out of it, which was customer emails in this case. Um, the scammers then used those emails to send phishing emails to the pizza customers. It doesn't always come naturally to be paranoid about how our code will be used, but that's what we need to do to mitigate the risks. And I learned a valuable lesson that day, and sleep even less now. So, um, a security plugin is definitely a must, but you have to choose them pretty carefully. One well-known security plugin, and I'm not naming and shaming in, in this talk, I'll tell you in private later, um, was revealed as keeping plain text passwords in the database. So, I mean, that's not, not a good look, and this was just recently. Uh, Two-factor authentication, DB prefix changing, no usernames the same as the domain name. I mean, I hope that would be an obvious one by now. No administrator or admin, and that would be another one. But you'd be surprised. You'd be very surprised. Uh, there's a lot of other hardening we can do, including turning off the author pages in our sitemaps because it's revealing our usernames thanks to a very common SEO plugin. Um, a WAF with login security is also a must to keep your brute force attacks at bay and keep a log of what's happening on your site. Uh, monitoring what's happening on your site is pretty critical to being able to stop an attack before they get your data. Um, I could go on forever, but I'm probably reaching the end of my time unless I've been talking too fast, which is entirely possible. So, if GDPR has taught us anything, or given us anything, other than a headache with the cookie consent stuff, because let's face it, um, also, I'm open to suggestions for anything better than cookie bots, so if anyone's got some goods, then let me know after. Um, it's taught us that every person has a right to a basic level of privacy. Our data is important, whether it's blog article drafts that weren't meant to see the light of day, pictures of our kids that we were sharing with our family on the web server, a local company site selling flowers and as the customer info saved in the database. Um, sometimes when we think about the data that's saved on websites, it's maybe not so critical, but it's still important to someone. Um, and just because big tech isn't taking our privacy as seriously as it should, doesn't mean we can't try to secure our customers and ourselves against these torrent of bad actors, not including Nicolas Cage, by the way. So that's it.
thank you for listening to my ramblings. Thank you to the organizers. And I uh, look forward to the rest of WordCamp and learning lots from the next speakers. That's it.